Good morning and welcome to Tiger's Great Journey Read Aloud. Today we are finishing Tiger's Great Journey. We are doing the final chapter called Ascent to Ryogu Mountain and the Temple of the Clouds. And here you can see Tiger sparring with someone. So let's see what happens. Tiger was walking alone along the ridge of the mountain. Blake had wanted to come along, but Tiger had to tell him that he needed to do the last leg of this journey alone. Blake, you're a good friend, but you've been and you've been a great companion, but I need to do this on my own. Blake was a little put off at first, but then he came around. I understand, Tiger. I will be with you in spirit. I'm honored to have shared this much of your great journey with you. Tiger thanked him and then started off. He had taken one last look at the parchment map he had found when he and Blake started this great journey. It was now complete. Creativity, the last of the 12 leadership traits represented as a book with empty pages had appeared on the map. He was now on the last leg of the great journey to Ryoku Mountain and the Temple of the Clouds. The air was crisp and mild and the sun felt good on his face. He let his mind rest on thoughts and images as they came and went keeping him company. He knew where he was going this time as he walked purposefully without hurrying. In the distance, the temple sat on the mountain peak. White clouds bumped into the towers, reaching up from the solid stone structure. Tiger wasn't sure how far the walk was, as distance could be deceiving here, but he was content to enjoy the fresh air and beautiful vistas that surrounded him. After about an hour, the path turned away from the edge of the ridge into the end of a broad meadow. Tiger could hear sheep bleeding up ahead. After a few minutes, he saw them in the meadow grazing on grass. The herd looked to be well fed and well cared for. He saw tents a little further along ahead the path, the path he was following. As Tiger approached the encampment, one of the shepherds saw him and waved to him. Tiger waved back and the man walked toward him. Good afternoon, the man said. Good day to you, sir, Tiger replied while extending his hand. My name is Tiger. My name is Kai, the man said. Where are you from? Tiger thought for a moment as this wasn't an easy answer as one might think. I'm from California. Is this far away, Kai asked. I have not heard of this place. Yes, it is far away. Then you must join us for tea. It is time for all of us to gather for a break from our work. Tiger smiled and said that he would be delighted to do so. Tiger knew that many of the people in this area would take a refusal of hospitality as an insult, and he didn't want to be impolite. Kai guided Tiger to the center of the campsite where many of the shepherds and their families had gathered for tea and a break from work. Kai introduced him to the group who were sitting on blankets and small folding chairs. His presence caused quite a stir as they were not used to visitors, especially from far away. Tiger's hosts were curious about where he came from and marveled at his gi. Tiger thought about how he should answer them and decided to tell them the story of Shotokan Karate Leadership Schools. He told them how karate was a system of self-defense that gave its practitioners enormous energy, confidence, and freedom. He told them about the great and humble leader, Gichin Funakoshi, and how he had a dream to see karate practiced by people from all around the world. And he told them how Shotokan Karate Leadership Schools had created a system that used karate as a platform to train young people to be leaders so they could transform their world. The shepherds were very attentive and asked Tiger many questions. When he had finished, Kai asked Tiger if he would like to stay for dinner. But Tiger told him he had to move on and excused himself. Kai asked him where he was headed and Tiger told him that he was going to the top of Ryoku Mountain in the Temple of the Clouds. Kai looked at Tiger very seriously and nodded. He said, many times members of our community sought to visit the temple that lives in the clouds. They would journey for many days without ever coming closer. After many more days, they would return. I'm afraid that perhaps Ryoku Mountain and the Temple of the Clouds is only a mirage. Tiger smiled at Kai and thanked him for his hospitality. He turned away and continued his journey. Tiger suspected, that the Temple of the Clouds was only to be found by those few who knew the way. In the middle of the afternoon, when the sun was at its warmest, Tiger gazed at the distant temple. It appeared to him that it had moved a bit closer. As he walked, Tiger thought about the many adventures he had embarked on through the Book of the Empty Mind. 
He remembered the day at the beach when he met the old man and how important he had become to him. With each leg of his journey, Tiger's grasp of what he had said evolved. Tiger, what you see with your eyes is merely the surface of all that there is to see, was his admonition. Tiger had come to realize how this applied to leadership, karate, and the relationships he shared with all the people in his life. The trail that Tiger was following had returned to the ridge. The Temple of the Clouds was only visible at certain times as rocks and boulders obscured the view. The daylight was failing now, the air became crisp, but Tiger was comfortable in his gi as he walked on. Tiger saw that he was no longer on a trail. He was now walking on a path made of rock, which had been worn smooth by the passing of generations of feet. He felt proud to share this path that so many had walked on before. He thought about how many passages it had taken to polish the stones. It occurred to him that since they had polished and honed his character and skills through years of training. As the dust slipped into darkness, Tiger had reached a great staircase. Every 20 steps, a torch flickered at either side to light the way up, with the towers of the temple beckoning in the distance. Tiger put his foot on the first step and began his ascent. They were taller and longer than normal, and it took effort to ascend them. A test of my resolve, Tiger mused. He arrived at the first pool of light after 20 steps. The next step was twice as high and had the figure of a bowing karate ka carved into it. This time, a figure in Seiza was carved into the stone. On the next step, there was a carving of a karate student in forward stance. Then came the step with a student doing a front kick, followed by another one with the carving of a student, sword hand blocking in back stance which was followed by a step with a student who was roundhouse kicking. Continuing his arduous climb, Tiger saw another step with a student performing side elbow strike and side stance, then one with a student performing a step and punch middle body, another one with a student side snap kicking, followed by one with a student side thrust kicking, and yet another one with a student performing a pressing block and spear hand thrust in forward stance. As he climbed the steps and saw the different carvings, Tiger came to understand the meaning of it all. The carvings represented the basic karate skills, and the steps stood for repetition, which was necessary to master these skills. When Tiger reached the top of the staircase, the final carving was the same as the first, a figure bowing. Tiger looked back down the staircase and realized that he hadn't even thought about how many steps he had taken to get here. Tiger took one last look at the flickering staircase, turned, and moved on. The path had changed into an avenue wide enough for five men to walk down. He charged ahead and saw that the path turned to the right. As he arrived at the turn, Tiger came to an abrupt stop. The path ahead was paved with stone and lined with 12 freestanding granite columns, six on each side about five yards apart. Much further ahead, Tiger could see there was a stairway leading to the Temple of the Clouds. He was awestruck by the strength and immensity of the, st of the structure. It stood alone on an open field atop Ryoko Mountain. It appeared to be about 100 feet high and twice as wide and long and made of thick, sturdy timbers. Tiger stood up a little straighter and walked on. As he approached the first of the columns, he looked up and saw the symbol for the Black Belt Shoka leadership trait of courage, a small child standing up to a large man. The next column displayed courtesy, a figure bowing. Then came integrity, a handshake, humility, a child sitting in Seiza, self-control, a closed fist in an open hand, trust, two figures sparring, endeavor, a figure in side stance, responsibility, a belt tied in a square knot, cooperation, two figures stretching each other simultaneously, justice, a dove with the scales of justice on its beak, compassion, a hand reaching up and another hand reaching down to give a hand up, creativity, an open book with blank pages. These pillars were the traits of the Black Belt Shoka leader, the foundation upon which the leader stood. Tiger passed the last column and ventured into the darkness beyond. After he had walked about 50 steps, he saw a circle of light. As he approached it, he saw a man sitting cross-legged at a table with a teapot and two cups. Sit, Tiger, and let us speak, he said. Tiger sat down as the man poured a cup of tea for both of them. The man was trim and in excellent health, and he gave the impression of being a lot older than he looked. The journey of the Black Belt Shoka leader is a long one, the man said. What wisdom do you have to share with me? Tiger thought for a moment about all his experiences in the dojo, in his life, and with the book of the empty mind. 
I have come to realize that for me to be able to receive all that I could from my journey, I had to release my mind. The first time I opened the book of the empty mind, I did not know what to expect. It was new, exhilarating, and mysterious. I learned a lesson, but perhaps missed its deeper meanings. As I practiced hand shodan as a team member, I just wanted to put all the moves in the right spot. When I practice hand shodan as an assistant school leader, I am still learning new things about the kata that I've performed a thousand times. Releasing my mind allows me to be able to receive whatever lesson or insight there is for me that day because I'm in such a receptive state. By letting go and releasing, I can hold on to so much more that is important. The man picked up his cup and sipped. Thank you for sharing your wisdom, Tiger. Your insight will help you in your journey. You may proceed. Thank you, sir, Tiger said as he stood up. And as he did, the light faded and the man was gone. Tiger looked towards the Temple of the Clouds and began walking again when torches started to rise along the sides of the avenue. As the light grew brighter, he saw that he had walked into an area that was perfectly flat. And along the side stood many students in karate gis. A powerful male voice shouted, Kion. Immediately, Tiger was surrounded on all sides by dozens of karate students who lined up along with him. Then the voice commanded Yame, make forward stance, now step and punch upper body, twice middle body. Each knee, saw, she, go, rock. Tiger kiyed at the end of each combination as the voice put him and the other students through the basics at a blistering pace. Step back, rising block, reverse punch, middle body, each knee, song, she, go, rok. Return. Step and outside forearm block, side stance, side elbow strike, downward back fist strike, each knee, song, she, go. Step back, back stance, sword hand block, front leg, front kick, forward stance, spear hand thrust, ichi, ni, san, shi, go. The voice continued to take the students through their basics at a relentless pace. The students had run through all the basics except for the last. In front of each student, there appeared a light, much like a firefly hovering in the air. The voice said, punch 10 times at the small moving target and stop your fist within a quarter of an inch without hitting it. The light jerked to the right of Tiger and stopped. Each, Tiger punched and key-eyed, his punch stopping a quarter inch from the target. Again, the target moved down to the center. Knee, Tiger punched and key-eyed. Now the target shot up to the left. Som, the target moved. She, the target moved. Go, this continued until the final time, Ju. Tiger punched again with Kime, stopped a quarter inch from the target and key-eyed. Everything turned silent as the students stood and the lights hung in the air. Yame, the voice said. Tiger returned to the ready stance. He was still flanked on all side by students. You may proceed, the voice said. As rapidly as they had appeared, the student shot out into the fading torchlight, leaving the temple as a beacon for Tiger to follow. Tiger continued his path toward the temple of the clouds. He was now halfway there. The light again arose around him, but this time he found himself in a large square. Tiger stopped and stood at the ready, waiting for his instructions. He could see hundreds of students surrounding him on the edge of the darkness. Pata, this time the powerful voice was female. Yame, tiger stood ready. Ray, tiger bowed. Hand godon. Hand godon, tiger said clearly in a loud, firm voice. All of his training had come down to this day. As he performed the kata, tiger realized that each movement came from a place deep inside him, flowing out of him like water. When he finished the last movement, he stood ready and watching for more imaginary attackers. Yame replied the voice. Then he returned to natural state and bowed. Asadai, said the voice. Asadai, Tiger thundered. Tiger was still for a moment as his surroundings melted away. He performed the first move, and in his mind he saw and heard each attacker. The fluidity and kime of his movements made his performance memorable. To all who were watching, there was no doubt that he was stopping the many imaginary opponents who were attacking him. Each technique was crisp and smooth, and his key eyes were loud and powerful. When the last one rang out, it was reverberated back from the adjacent peaks like an answer to his cry. He held his attention. Yame, the voice said, proceed. With that, the light faded and Tiger walked toward the temple. As he moved closer, he could see the temple's features. Carved on the beam above the doors was a tiger enclosed in a circle, the symbol of Shotokan Karate. Below that were the carved images of the 12 traits of a black belt Shoka leader. Tiger walked into the temple and stood in the center. 
as he did a spotlight or rose that highlighted the center arena. Tiger prepared himself for what lay ahead. Another voice this time, Kumite, Kumite. Tiger surveyed his surroundings and saw that there were again many students surrounding him. One stepped out and walked over to face him. Ray came the command. Tiger and this unknown opponent bowed to each other. The sparring match began. Tiger kept his mind empty as his opponent closed the distance and attacked his head. Tiger stepped back, blocked the punch, and then front kicked to the middle body while stepping in and punching to the upper body. His kick was blocked and his punch ducked and his opponent countered with a side thrust kick to Tiger's midsection. Tiger moved quickly to close the distance, but his opponent moved just as quickly back. Tiger stopped as if to retreat and his opponent moved back toward him, and then Tiger sprung the trap. He stepped back and quickly stepped forward, firing a punch to conceal the front kick he unleashed at his opponent's midsection. It was a solid bow. His opponent drew back and then he shot in at Tiger. Tiger reacted smoothly, stepping to the left and blocking his opponent's punch with an upper level inside forearm block. His opponent spun and Tiger stepped in and caught him with a perfectly timed punch to his throat. Tiger's control was excellent as the punch stopped a quarter of an inch from the target. Yame, the voice said, and Tiger moved back to his starting position. Bow and step back. Tiger bowed and backed up to the edge of the room. Light suddenly illuminated his surroundings. Tiger now had a clear view of the platform at the front of the room. It was an open stage and as wide as the room. He could see the figure standing on the steps that led from the center arena up to the platform. Then he heard Sensei's voice calling him to come forward. As he walked forward, the students who had been sitting in the darkness all stood up. When Tiger approached the stairs, he began to make out the others who were on the stage. They were the instructors he knew from the dojo and in the center stood Sensei. A little to the back was the old man who had given him the book of the empty mind. Just then Tiger recognized him. It was Master Funakoshi himself. He smiled at Tiger and Tiger smiled back. Sensei just, just gestured to Tiger to come join them. When Tiger reached the top step, he bowed first to Sensei and then bowed even more deeply to Master Funakoshi. He turned around and looked back over the many black belt Shoko leaders who had come out onto the floor and begun training as a single group of well-coordinated teams. They were performing basics and doing what good Shoko leaders do everywhere, demonstrating the 12 traits of a black belt Shoko leader. Courage, courtesy, integrity, humility, self-control, trust, endeavor, responsibility, cooperation, justice, compassion, and creativity. Tiger blinked his eyes and heard Sensei say his name, Tiger. He was back in the dojo and Sensei was at the front of the room holding a black belt and calling his name. He had lived this great journey in the mountains of his imagination and for real in the dojo. It had transformed him. He was no longer the scrawny nine-year-old kid he was when he started. Now he was 13, a strapping young man, a fine leader, and a force to be reckoned with. He was now a black belt Shoka leader and he was here to receive the symbol of that rank, the black belt. The one thing he had learned from this journey was that it was not enough to just be a leader. He had to be a true leader, a hero. This great journey was not just for him, it was for all the people of the world. He knew that this was not the end, but rather the beginning. He had mastered the basics, but he still had so much more to learn. Now his great journey would take him on a spiritual quest that would result in self-mastery, not for his own benefit, but to give him the opportunity to do as much as possible for the greatest number of people. With that, Tiger stepped forward to receive what he had worked so hard for so many years. The end. And here you have a picture of Tiger with his sensei receiving his black belt. What a wonderful story. So again, you can always review the previous videos and go through this again. And if you wanna come into the school and you wanna pick up a copy, if you haven't yet, you may do that as well. Thank you so much for spending all this time with me and listening, and we look forward to seeing you on your own great journey. Have a great day.